Well, let's call the meeting to order at 6.30. Are we on, everything's ready? Okay. Um, do we have any additions to the agenda? Yes, we do. I see that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is this long list of things under, <laughs> under addition to the agenda? No. Are those all additions? Yeah, well, that hopefully will be done. Um, and I figured we'd probably tack him on to the end. Um, but I emailed the select board. Well, we don't need to go through all of these now, but some of them were quick. But. Okay, so your addition is discussing the meeting with Cal? That and then there's a question about the remaining um, bond I, I put bond balance, but it's really not bond balance. But yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll put that in somewhere. Um okay. Now the discussing planning commission candidate is that an addition? Yes. Oh. Um, I just want to let myself known here. I'm here. I don't know if I was supposed to be here <laughs> for that or not. <laughs> Hi, Maya. Hey. <laughs> um, and the Planning Commission update and the Energy Committee, those are all additions? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Anybody else have additions? Oh, okay. Review of minutes, November 28th. The, um, just on page four, the meeting schedule is for January 2nd rather than January 3rd, unless it's not a regular meeting date. I don't know if you guys decided to change it, but it's either not a regular meeting date or it's January 2nd. Yes, I think I had it written wrong on the last one, so that might, okay. that's my fault. Not here. Okay. The January I, second. I yes. noticed that it was annotated in yellow on the annotated yes, agenda today because maybe you want to reconsider that. Well, that it's a question. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is that a holiday for you? That is that is technically the holiday. All right. I'm fine attending the meeting, but it's a question for the select board. So that is recognized New Year's Day holiday. That makes sense. Oh, January second. I wanted yeah. to ask because. the select board if that's why it's highlighted in the yellow. If that was an appropriate date, or if we need to revisit that. I don't see any yellow on my copy. On your headline. Oh, on your annotated agenda. Oh, I'm oh, on that. Yeah, okay. Go. It's not on the minute. It's that yeah. me highlighting. Yes. Yeah. 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 Got it. I, um, I have to go the minutes and then look into a journey. Uh, so the titles. Yeah, I noticed that. I had it. I'm getting ready to pounce. He stole all my thunder. Okay, so we're changing that. And what else is there? Well, what do folks think about keeping the date on the third, the second, or the third? Well, that. We're, we're well, that, keeping the minutes. So. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Minutes. I'm sorry. Right. I'm right, jumping right. ahead. Good. I apologize. apologize. Like, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. <laughs> sorry about that. We're just correcting the uh, uh, little error there. Uh, so are there any other changes? I just had a question of somebody who wasn't there. Uh, the county road celebration uh, talks about Larry Gilbert's contribution. Mm -hmm. Were there in was there anything received from other people, positive or negative, that you guys talked about? No. Okay. No. Okay. Anecdotally positive. Yeah. And yes. Yeah. Yeah. There. Nobody officially came to the meeting and said that, though. Yeah. Except for Larry Gilbert. I, I got one ahead of time negative jitters from Colorado yes. residents. <laughs> yes. Uh, but they were going to be out of town anyway. Um, I think that it all settled. I mentioned that to Larry and I said I was going to email him with the person that had fretted ahead of time. I think that the fretting was over when this happened successfully, okay. but I'm okay. going to email him. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? One minute. I make a motion that we approve the minutes with the adjustments. I second that. All the favor, please say aye. 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 <clears throat> minutes are passed. Um, public comment. We don't really have any public here, kind of, not really. 
Well, Maya is a candidate. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't have any comment though. <laughs> yeah, I guess we could call you public. Is that are those six windows across the top? Are they everybody, or are there other people in the meeting that we're not aware of? Okay. Okay. Ed Deegan, no. Okay. Um, so we're a few minutes early for the presentation of FY 2024 Capital Improvement Committee plan, but I think the people are all here. Um, Don, are you presenting? Well, Ed, do you want me to present it or do you want to? You're muted. Ed. Yeah, I know I'm unmuting. Um, no, you go ahead, Don. I mean, basically, it's a flat budget, so it's easy to present. It's basically, you know, but yeah, go for okay. it. So here, Don, why don't you come up? Anybody who want a copy that doesn't have one? Or you, you I've got a copy. copy. So if everybody can get a copy, then we'll ask. Mm -hmm. Throw those away. Mm -hmm. Want me to do it here or? Right here is um, good. Wherever you feel comfortable. Stand, why not? Oh, you want to stand? It's cool. I know. Well, that's good. I've been sitting there all day. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway, the the uh, plan that you were have with your uh, in my hand papers uh, yeah. is virtually the same as it was before. There's one change that one place we made changes, and that's on page eight, I believe it is, which is paving, oh, yeah. and it. What we did there is, uh, what, what, it was sitting there with all of the paving going into uh, the next year, and so we talked with with Guthrie, and the way it sits now is the way he expects that it will be spent. So it's when you look in the expenses, it's just moved. It moved the paving into a more reasonable pattern yeah and um we didn't recording in progress this meeting is uh, being recorded the uh the down at the bottom left you'll see we've got 175,000 per mile in the estimate and that's in, in cost. And then there's also an eight year lifespan in the cycle. Yeah. And we stayed with the eight because we wanted to wait and see what we what it costs us this year to spend it. And it looks like we were the plan shows 772. And I think I was looking at it. And if you look on the back of the papers that you have that Gina gave you, it was 727. So that uh you that's pretty good stuff there um so that's even with all the extra costs we had this year it worked yeah. out and then yeah, we had the money and the other one was the culverts we ex we had in the page in the next page if you look at it we had 150,000 to go against grants uh the pound portion and i think the pound portion came out to about 185,000 yeah. So between the two of them, we're we're pretty close. Yeah. Um, so yeah. on your paving, it said one eighty-seven a mile or something else, right? Yeah, one well, one eighty-seven per mile. Yeah. And we didn't change that. That's still in the plan. We wanted to see how the how it came out, and at least the plan provided the right amount of money. Yeah. And so we can take a look this next year and look at the per mile and, and see if we need to make adjustments. But this year we didn't. And the other one we can do is that some of the road we may extend the lifespan on, like Town yeah. Hill Road has done very well. Yeah. And so we put them all at eight years originally, but now we will talk with Guthrie and say, okay, do we want to shorten or lengthen any of those? And that could adjust the amount, the yeah. annual amount that we put aside for that. Uh, the other topic that uh, we didn't finalize, and that's the trucks, because we didn't know exactly what the truck's going. You Right now, the plan has uh, one six-wheeler and three ten-wheelers. Uh, and I and it provides this year. That's page. I should be page seven, I think. Six, I think. Yeah. Or six, six or nine. Yeah. Okay. 
it uh, we may go to another ten wheeler. Well, we're keeping so, one right now. Right. So what, you so see, that, you what, see this one ten wheeler that to be replaced. There's yeah. The cost of that in there at one hundred and seventy five, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Gina didn't know what the total cost may be, and it. She also tells me that apparently you're going to save, you're going to keep the old one and use it as a backup. And then you've got two six wheelers too. So the question is, do you want to put any more lines in going ahead for any, or do you want to keep it at the, the really the four vehicle replacement, the yeah, well that's one six wheeler and one and the three 10 wheelers. But we're going to have four 10 wheelers. And one they have four, right? Right. And that and we're getting rid of a six wheel because we have two of those. You get two six wheelers right now. And yeah. What we're going to, instead of getting rid of a 10 wheel, we're going to get rid of that international six wheel. So we, so there in, will be another line in there, I would think. But well, we it depends about. whether you're going to replace. Now, if you if you're just going to maintain the the, the 10 wheeler and the six extra six wheeler or or the just the 10 wheeler, then that'll come out of the operational budget. So if you're not planning to replace and have a fourth 10 wheeler on a regular basis, then mm. that's, you know, that's what you have to decide. And you can tell us, I would recommend, you know, there's no, I don't think we want to make, have you make that decision right now, but for next year. Yeah, we got to talk to Dr. Yeah. Reed. We're going to have to see how that's going to all work out. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, not as the budget is. I mean, the plan is the same as it was before. Yeah, and we didn't and set any money aside for the for the buildings. That's right. The There's been no year. no money is set aside for that or sidewalks or for the garage for the uh, buildings. Those are all things that we can talk about next year as of what we want to do, if anything. And so the bottom line is that the the funding for the plan is level. Mm -hmm. So we probably talked about this before, but I don't remember the answer. Why is inflation factor set to 0.0%? Well, uh, when we started, we haven't had to use it. Mm -hmm. uh, and inflation, inflation and interest pretty much offset each other up in normal times. Uh, it's not normal now. And um if we were tighter in the plan uh, that might be something that we want to do it, it, the built the ability is built in there and so so but it's, let me can i give some input here because some of the chair of this um i'm sorry i didn't put my hand up i don't remember how to do this with zoom but um uh, this was not a unanimous decision to, to level fund. We should point out the towns had some transitional stuff going on. Um, I think in, we took in input from both Michelle and Gina on this, who are just coming into the picture. Uh, they had some, some comments that we didn't have time to work through. Um, Scott, we put a line item for the sidewalks in last year and put no money into it. There is about a million dollar asset sitting on our, uh, the books of the town with those sidewalks that we have no money for. And we've had the uh, discussion that, well, we really don't know what the replacement value is, so we can't put a value in there. And, you know, all the what ifs, it's not like buying a, a truck where you have a fixed, you know, that they're, they're $150,000 or the $250,000, they last for 10 years. Sidewalks aren't like that. There's a, a ton of sunken cost into the uh, upfront. But the reality for the town and planning for the future is that we're probably going to be liable for those sidewalks, even though most of the money was federal. So we should be planning for it. And my my goal as the chair and as a, one of the representatives, I guess, is to have what they call sustainable growth levels. So I did approve this because I think Gina and uh, Michelle's input was that it's a tight operational budget this year. The capital budget, as Don pointed out and in, in, in your comments, Carl, about the inflation is that the budget works pretty well. 
It's given us a lot of flexibility. It gives you guys a lot of flexibility. We had a hundred thousand dollar item hit this past year that wasn't in the budget, and we were able to, you know, we're able to fund it, the the fire truck. So as as it's going, it was well done budget from the beginning. It's being tweaked over time. Personally, I think the sustainable. I I, I look at two percent growth as a sustainable thing for the town, and that would include a bunch of stuff. But the issues that came up besides the sidewalks is we know we've been talking for years about um, the town garage needs to be replaced and the town hall. And we really are underfunded if you're looking at the capital budget on both of those. They were very lean budgets, especially for the building you're sitting in. Um, there's a few things in there that, you know, are questionable they, whether they should be in there. But long term planning for the town. I think we should be looking at putting some some uh, money into both of those items, a small amount, because the whole point of the capital budget is if we know we're going to get hit in five years, let's say for the town garage, you're going to have a forty or fifty thousand dollar a year bond item hit. So if we start putting money away slowly now, it's not going to be a fifty thousand dollar increase in the budget in one year. You're going to whittle away and and have that money. You're going to have to borrow a lot less uh, to do the projects. So to me, I would have liked to have seen maybe a 2% increase and, and put a little bit of money into both of the buildings and into the sidewalks. But I'm fine. I voted for this budget flat, you know, flatly funded. Um, I think that was the agreement that we came to for a number of reasons, especially the operational budget being so tight this year. And you've got a whole bunch of inflationary problems that the town's uh, dealing with. So I have no problem with this, but I'm just giving you the heads up that it was not a unanimous decision. And I think moving forward, we just uh, we should be aware of of, uh, of the factors that we're looking at. Uh, so, may I follow up? Sure. So uh, thank you both of you for those answers. Um, Want to go back to your uh, part of your answer, Don, about the. Uh, actual inflation in normal times somewhat matching the interest that we earn. Uh, I don't see much in the capital plan indicating that interest is plowed back into the capital budget. Am I missing it, something? It is plowed back. It is. Uh, yeah. If you look uh, probably on the aggregate page, page two. Which yeah, I see annual interest earned and there's nothing in that line. And then I see GF transfer and interest and there's nothing in that line either well, the, the interest the interest has to be added in order to make the make the uh make this the total this total equal that total and that one there if you widen that out you'll get the real total uh -huh. the, the, but, the bulk the bulk of the town interest carl is coming from the capital budget reserve fund <laughs> so we when you allocate the interest, yeah, the interest gets allocated to the various funds. There's an interest allocation sheet, and I believe the capital budget gets the portion, the probably the lion's share of that budget comes in back well, to the. And that interest is credited to the opportunity fund. Right, I'm yeah. looking at the opportunity fund right now. Okay, I see that. That's the only Annual place. Earn, it says right here. That's the only place that I see interest noted yeah. on here, okay. and even in this uh, low interest time. I mean, that's like 1% uh, interest it's all on, getting. on the opportunity fund itself. Yeah, but I mean, we're not, we were, we're getting one tenth of a percent of interest. I mean, all, all of last year. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's going up substantially though now. I mean, I, you get notices from the banks all the time and get, yeah. for 15 month certificate, you get, Three percent interest. So yeah. mm -hmm. you should be able to get more interest than that with with the. Well, as the CDs yeah. come forward, I'm sure Michelle's keeping track of that, and we'll be rolling them over to better interest rates. Okay. So so let's let's get back to the main discussion here. Is that what Ed is saying is absolutely true, and that's well said, Ed, and I appreciate your insight into those um, different funds that we're talking about. We do have a lot of money in the opportunity fund which could go into um, a garage or a town building or whatever we decide to do. Um, but I think it, I think that you're wise to leave it level funded this year because we do have operational um, costs have gone up significantly. 
Yep. And we also have um, a higher than usual rate of people not being able to pay their taxes. So we, there's a lot of pressures that we have on our budget. So I, I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. So if we can keep it level funded for this year, but keeping the things in mind that Ed just talked about for next year, I think that's a, a wise move for the moment. We're in a holding pattern on this area of our budget. That's what we need to do. That's that's my opinion. So I, I, I agree. That's why I did vote for Seth and, and as is. And and also, you know, I, I've been able to, if you go back historically, uh, the opportunity fund has had some increases in the last couple of years. Um, some of that was pushed by me to, you know, I said we should be increasing it because you know there's a lot of unknowns in these budgets. Yeah. But the budget has right. worked really well over over yeah. its life so far. It really has I mean, been it's withstood, it's withstood the paving that we did this year and that went up yeah. a lot. And yeah. we still yeah. came in okay on that. And you know, those things are such a variable. Paving is a huge variable, you know, it's based on cost of oil. We don't know what's going to happen with that. So I think we're in a pretty good place on that, especially with yeah. the eight year yeah. thing, because eight year on our, most of our paving is we actually are going to extend the life of most of those roads, but we're putting a significant amount of money in there based on the eight year plan. But there's a lot of roads in town that are paved. They're going to go longer than that. So we're okay on um, this year on this plan, in my opinion. No, I think we're, so, we're fine. Yeah. I yeah, just well, want to point out good. that the, the future of the town looking down, we have all these things in there. I don't want yeah. to forget about them. Yeah. No, no, that's great. I mean, that's really good information. And the thing that happens with a lot of our paving, we do get uh, grants grants so that it reduces the cost. Exactly. Per mile. Yeah. So, and we've done well with the grants and we'll probably yeah. continue to do so. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and uh, Seth, just to let you know that, that your input was also the uh, Michelle's and uh, Gina's input at the meetings, uh, which they were they thought the level funding this year was the way to go. Yeah, uh, they've got two new people coming in and and, uh, and their input's going to be critical. So, you know, this is a good year to, you know, uh, look to the future, but uh, keep things steady, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. All right. So well, thank, thank you both for all the work you put into this. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate it. And um, we'll keep moving forward and keep an eye on all the different lines on this. And I'm sure next year we're going to have some changes. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll get right at it. Yeah. Okay. It'll be, it's, a, it's a moving target. It is. So we know that. So thanks again. And uh, I think we should move on to the next um, item because we've got a gentleman here to talk about the Whitesville Beach. And we don't want to delay. I'm sure he's got other commitments. Thanks. <laughs> Can you take a seat at the table, sir? Yeah. Definitely. I believe we have our town representative for Wrightville Beach here as well. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. All right. So this looks like a big topic in a short amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. I think we can move quickly on it. Oh, good. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to give you a brief, uh, not history, but just how Wrightville works. We are a special district comprised of four member towns, East Montpelier, Middlesex, Worcester, and Montpelier. All of the, those towns contribute to our budget. And um, we have the ability to assess the per capita to each town. When the park was created back in 1985, the per capita was capped at 50 cents. It was subsequently increased to $1.50. And we are now seeking to increase that cap to $4. Oh. And now that that is the reason we're, we're trying to go to four. That's not our, our intention isn't to charge you $4 in the near future. It's so we don't need to come back again for at least a decade. Okay. What our intention is, is to increase it to um, $2.50 for the next um, fiscal year. Hmm. Okay. And I can go into why we um, are seeking to increase that. I don't know if uh, Kim gave you guys the handout. Oh, uh, yeah, I've got one. Okay. So, you know, the basics, just like you guys are talking about with, with roads. Um, you know, maintenance. We it's taken the park has gone through some really, really tight years, um, about 36 really tight years. 
out of mm -hmm. 37. Um, but we now have a little bit of a financial cushion that we can use for the matching part of grants that we're going to apply for. And um, those grants would go to uh, replacing roofs, improving the bathrooms, putting in an, a third picnic shelter, creating some other covered um, picnic areas to help people be able to have their events regardless of the weather, to continue to keep the price of admission um, as low as possible and affordable to all of our residents. We don't want anybody not to be able to play outdoors because of the price. Um, and we're always looking to, you know, what we can do for current and future recreational needs, how to harden off the, we've been, we've been doing this um, line number five for years, um, making the facility more resilient to heavy rain events, making the facility usable during heavy rain events. And uh, we're going to expand our equipment rental fleet, which <laughs> is currently um, boat rentals. Last year, we did almost a thousand boat rentals. Um, and then we're going to keep the park open later in the season. We, we did an experiment with that this year where we kept the park open through um, Columbus Day. And it was really well received. We were busy right through the closing day. And we've opened the park three weeks earlier than in the past. And this isn't because it's just an idea. It's because the demand is there. People are parking outside of our gate. And um, we just need to be able to open that gate. And we'll, we are working with um, adjacent towns and their trail network uh, committees. So that's um, including the East Montpelier Trail Network and the Cross Vermont Trail and Middlesex and Worcester. And so the way this is all going to be possible, um, my I, I've I've managed Wrightsville for 22 years out of the 37, and um, someone told me this year that was my my side hustle. It took me 1,200 hours this year. Um, my full time job is at Norwich University, but I'm actually this plan will enable me to leave Norwich University, and I'll be become an 85 percent of full time employee for Wrightsville primarily to work on planning, grant writing, um, and collaborating with those trail committees and seeking sponsorships. And I also wanna say, so I, I, I grew up in East Montpelier. I'm a taxpayer in Montpelier. I'm not frivolous with my money, the town money. I'm very frugal with town money. Um, I have a great, uh, um, I, I, I love I love this community. That's why I moved back here. So um, the plan is to benefit the community. Any questions at this point? I got a question. Um, it seemed like last, last time you were here, you were trying to get a grant from somebody. I think you were to fund your salary. From the state. Yeah, yeah, from the state. Yeah. Did and that happen? That did not happen. Yeah. We're going to go back to, to that same. So that's the VOREC grant. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we will apply again to VOREC, but um, paired back a little bit. So this this year, the application will be all about um, getting rental equipment. So boats um, and then a, tra a boat trailer, uh, enclosed trailer. So we've, yeah. So you are familiar with um, the grant process and grant writing process and the keywords to use when you're applying for grants. So I apply the this. money. <laughs> I no, no, that doesn't work. I applied. I, I learned a little bit about myself. So, so in my job at Norwich, I applied for the same grant, both yeah. and we got one hundred twenty thousand dollars. You did. We previously received thirty-five thousand dollars in grants. Yeah, we're applying for another thirty-five thousand dollars grant this year. Um, I received BGS grants at Wrightsville. Yeah. Um, 
So you, so you know the system. Green Mountain United Way. Yeah. Um, yes, I'm I'm familiar with grant writing. And, yeah. There's a lot of competition for those grants. Oh yeah. Well, and, and well, there's it, a lot of money though they're giving away. So well, we were pushing the scope. I mean, Phil Scott had said think outside of the box. Yeah. So that's why I said I'm pairing it back. I'm going to those elements that are outside of the box. I'm just going to admit this time and go with what they're more familiar with. Okay. Yeah. Oh, nice. Well, I just I'm not criticizing you. I'm curious, okay, about what happened last time, because I remember when you were in here before, and did you get the grant? And then, of course, um, because I know grants are a huge um, revenue stream for a lot of places right now, and what makes those successful, you know, because as, my, as a farmer, you know, we're conscious that we now have to use grants as part of our revenue stream, and some farms are very successful in drawing those grants in, and some are not. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's the deal. Last year was the first grant that I didn't receive that I've applied for. Oh, really? In many, yeah. I mean, oh, that's, you know. I'm but sure I, like I said, I, I received one. Right, and right, right. right. <laughs> and I'm sure you are conscious of why they rejected the one. And I followed uh, up with them. <laughs> right. <laughs> details. Yeah. Oh, so good. Okay. We'll move on. Yeah. 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 Um, I've been on the board maybe four or five years. And um, and I'm always amazed that every year when we look at the budget and last year's actuals, we always seem to, I think because of Colin's really frugal management, we always manage to have some money left over. And it always, like as a board member, it worries me a little bit because we have a rainy summer and we might not, you know, there's always the chance that we might not meet that, we might not meet our expenses. And it's such an important resource that I also don't think like depending on grant money year to year, like that is probably going to be part of our mix, but I feel like we need some solid streams of money for a place that is so um, important to the public more and more. I think we have more users every year, you know, we're extending the season every year. Management also gets complicated every year. Um, because of the pandemic and so forth. And so I just think, I know you're going to talk about this, but I, as a board member, I just want you to know it's, I think it's really important to have town buy-in and it's not a lot of money, <laughs> really, when you, when you think about per person, it's, it's not a lot that we're asking for, considering what Wrightsville provides our communities. Yes, Carl. Yeah, so first of all, I'm not sure we presented you for the record in the beginning. So can we say you're Colin O'Neill, manager of Wrightsville? Yes. And Kim Kendall, town representative of yeah. Wrightsville. Well, yes. and uh, I support Wrightsville. I think it's a great uh, resource for the towns in the area. And I support uh, increasing the assessment to uh, 250 next year. Um, I'm curious about your suggestion that you wouldn't want to come back to us for uh, 10 years, because as Kim said, I think town buy-in is important. And I recognize that as a recreational district, Wrightsville is different than the you know, dozens of uh, organizations that come to us for funding and that voters vote on for funding each year. But I think it's a valuable part of town buy-in for them to go through the process of coming to the town governance and saying, this is what we're doing right now. This is how it's benefiting the town. And this is why we would like to have uh, this amount of money for next year. So uh, uh, w why not just increase the cap to 250 now? And as you see a need going forward to increase it up towards $4 in the future, come back every year or two. Um, why not? I don't have a good answer for why not. Um, just to have some flexibility so we're not coming back every year. I mean, I guess... You know that's the bottom line, mm -hmm. um, and we we did come here. I think it was last year or two years ago, just just to come and update you guys mm -hmm. as to what we're doing. We weren't asking you for anything. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I don't object to coming here mm -hmm. more regularly, but I I I mean, I think we're. I think you can trust us with the four dollar cap that we're not just going to jump to that. I mean, we only increase an assessment as needed. And part of this plan, the reason I, why I say $4 would keep us from having to come back 
for a decade is part of this plan will give me time to also seek out sponsorships. So we're spreading the financial burden farther afield. So right now we have um, four primary revenue sources and I'd like to get sponsorships to be a, a fifth. Mm -hmm. And that would really slow down our, our need to increase that per capita that we assess e each mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. um, but it would be nice to have that flexibility built in so, so we're not right at that cap right on that first year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if we were to say to you, we, uh, we approve the 250 cap and we understand your plan to bring it up uh, eventually at no more than 3% per year um, to, to $4. And uh, that sounds reasonable to us given everything else that you said, but we wanna hear you know, from you each year as we go up. Um, would that interfere with your plans to get sponsorships or do anything else that you need to do? I mean, I, I think we'd be willing to make time for you in our schedule each year. I'm not certain I, so you're, you're saying if we approve it at 250, not at the four dollar correct level correct i'm not going to say no to that yeah. um but just just so you guys all are aware you're the third town that i've gone to in this mm -hmm. process we went to middlesex the host town first mm -hmm. and they approved it at the four dollar cap um they approved the four dollar cap in 250 mm -hmm. for this year worcester has done the same um and like, I mean, it would be great if we could get all four towns to approve that four dollar cap. But like I said, um, what we really need in the short term is the two fifty. Mm -hmm. um, so. Based on our bylaws, it's the two fifty that we have to get approval from all the towns, or is it the four dollars? Well, we just have to get approval for the cap increase. Once we can assess whatever we need, yeah, within that cap, up to that cap. But it has so to be right for all four. Well, I don't. Is that going to be written up that it's $4 cap for 10 years? I'm just curious. No, no, it would no. just it would just be be approved at $4. $4. And then um, up to your discretion, up to how many years? I mean, this year it's, it's 250, I guess. Right. I mean, there's and no then, there's no then the next year four. <laughs> yeah, there's no time span built mm -hmm. in there. Right. Right. Okay. It just gives them a bunch of flexibility. Mm -hmm. They yeah, appreciate if they need it if it's necessary for, for this year and then next year. But they assume it. We're assuming they said about a three percent raise per year. Which yeah. could, oh, cap at three percent. That's the cap. depending on it's not a cap inflation and everything it's else. Just up to them the way they're presenting. Right, but the the intention is to not increase it at all after the two fifty for a few years. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean okay. that's where the sponsorships will come in. Yeah, and the grants. Um, right. It's I just don't want to. I don't want to say that we're, you know, guaranteeing that. Yeah. But, you know, our right. intention is in, in no year would we increase it by more than 3%. I think, you know, just like with the roads, you guys know that there's unforeseen expenses and unforeseen right. increases. So, um, you know, to, to have an understanding that we might have to increase it by 3% in one year, but that is not the intention. The intention is to increase it as little as possible. Um, what do the rest of you guys think about just, doing it in one jump versus uh, just, having them come back? I'm just trying to understand the ask or the request and what we're, you're looking for us to approve. So the first sentence is that you're looking to increase the cap of the per capita assessment from the current 150 to $4. Correct. So that's what you're looking for the approval, but you're representing that our first year is likely only going to be $2.50 and maybe thereafter a 3% increase, but the approval you're seeking from us is the 4% cap. Right. And the first year will be too thick. Mm -hmm. Yes, it won't be more than that. Um, the $4 is what It's saying. a $4 cap. Not the 4%. Yeah. $4, I'm sorry, thank yeah. you. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's what we're seeking to, mm -hmm. to get approval for is the, to go from 150 to $4. But the understanding is this year would be two fifty that we would assess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to keep it at two fifty for as long as possible by diversifying our mm -hmm. revenues stream. Mm -hmm. And that way you don't have to come back. Not as likely to have to come back for more funding in between, depending on how things go. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that 10 years would be the near term. That would be the short end of when we would have to come back. To go over the four dollars. 
right? I, I think that we could, you know, <laughs> given the sponsorship part and the grants. Um, so 3% of 250 is 75 cents, right? So you'd have to go to 325. You couldn't jump from a dollar uh, 250 to four dollars because that's more than three percent. And we would never. I mean, we would. You wouldn't do, wouldn't that. do that. There's right. no reason to do that. Yeah. So I'm trying to think of an analogous organization that we have input on. And Central Vermont Solid Waste Management <laughs> District comes to mind. Do I mean where are they in terms of what we've approved for a cap and, and what they're they've gone down. They've they gone do, down. They 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 dropped their per okay. capita due to um, COVID okay. um, and they're very worried about increasing it because they mm -hmm. have some towns, I told them that if they came to the town, we wouldn't jump all over them for increasing it back by 50 cents or a dollar. What is it? You know, it'd be 3,000 bucks. Yeah. Um, and and solid waste is very important to, to the whole state. Yeah. The thing is, um, they, uh, they're they very concerned about some of the other towns who are in their district mm -hmm. who can't afford that or feel mm -hmm. that they can't afford it. And they, they don't, so they can't just do one town and not another town. Yeah. Kind of want to bring everybody in together. Um, yeah, and that's a big concern because so, those towns can drop out. That's right, right. You'll drop out. out of that. The towns yeah. can drop out. And that's the other, that's the, that really has hindered them oh, in their huge. ability to do anything. That's just, that just towns. doesn't work. Like, that's it's not, not fun work. at all. <laughs> Have they discussed the? Uh, well, we're getting off. They, no, they, uh, <laughs> let's not do that right now. We could do it. We could talk about that. Yeah, that's, that's, we'll talk about it sometime. But anyway, let's get back to. So, and I just, right I, here. I just want to jump down and just finish off some of the, yeah, I want the numbers yeah. here. So, yeah. Um, so, the total cost of East Montpelier could go from $3,985 to $6,495. Mm -hmm. um, and is that the 250? That's at the 250. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's an increase of $2,500. That mm -hmm. combined with the three other towns will increase our budget by $13,366. Mm -hmm. And East Montpelier's total contribution to our budget for 2023 will be 3.98% of the $163,000 budget. I think that's a bargain. Mm -hmm. And then just just to go on, you know, we we operate the the park where it's open to everybody, but we have special incentives built in just for district residents. All district residents get a ten percent discount off of their season pass. All district residents get twenty five percent off of boat rentals. Um, and then you can combine if you're a district resident and you have a season pass, you get half price boat rentals. And we really put our money where our mouth is in trying to keep people as fit as possible through um, recreation physics and, and keeping that price as low as possible for everyone to come and recreate. What do the rest of you guys think about 250 versus four? You mean in regards to just saying 250 this time and, yeah. and not the cap four? I prefer yeah. the four the cap because it gives them a lot more flexibility to operate mm -hmm. and they don't have to come back to how many towns are in this four, five towns? Mm -hmm. Four. You don't have to, they, they could come back and do a report, but they don't have to come back and ask for money, hopefully. Well, I think what they're That's saying right. is that this their revenue stream is uncertain. Right. And it when you depend on grants, blah, 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 you like to have the flexibility of being to be able to assess more in a certain year. Mm -hmm. Up to four. That's that's the yeah, I mean two components. Yeah. Not not taking up more of your time yeah. than, than is necessary. But don't worry and, about us. And like Kim said, you know, when we have a down year, but we plan for that. I mean, we we know that every fifth year on average is going to be a rainy year. Mm -hmm. So we have a rainy day fund. Um, but you know, that might always not be adequate. Mm -hmm. it all, it, I mean, we've we've never had to have an emergency assessment in the past. I don't see why we would, but I always go kind of in dealing with these sort of these when you're billing people for for work or for projects like that, that you should increase your budget at, at a reasonable rate every single year. So you don't have to come back and ask for a large amount of money. Like right now, Washington Electric Co-op is going to ask for a 14.2% rate increase. They should have come back and they should have hit the town to hit us at maybe 2% or 3% over the last few years. And it wouldn't be as hard on people. Well, it's, incrementally, so listen, it's the same as tax rate. Well, I know, I know it's the same, but it's incremental improvements tend to stop people from being angry. Yeah, no, I understand. 
Now, um, that's what we do with the tax rate. That's why we right. have the capital reserve. But in this case, um, you're a little bit protected because of the town budget, and, and it's only a small part of our town budget would be going to you. But what you would do is you would be this one larger rate increase, and then it kind of will level out over time. Um, and I, I don't have a problem with that. And I, and I can understand the need for flexibility, the need to plan, and the need to have some cushion in there in case you need some extra money for something. Sometimes these grants require a match. Right. Well, that's why I mean, we, we have we have that cushion for the rainy day yeah. and for those grants. And right. That's, that's really critical that we built right. that up. Yeah. And we also put away every year we put away two thousand dollars for um, uh, what's depreciation. Right. That's good, too. It's hard to do that. And, you know, I just I just I want you all to know that, I mean, we we have a, a long track record of really watching our pennies. If we do this, I think you're the only organization that we would do this for, uh, that we would be doing it for. You know, Ke Kellogg Hubbard Library, the senior centers, uh, nobody else comes to us and asks for approval for a budget over five or 10 years. You just ask for funding for the coming year. Well, we did this before with all four towns, mm -hmm. um, the same scenario where we asked for um, an increase to the cap, but we assessed below the cap. Yeah. No, I know what Carl's saying. He's actually right in that choosing an annual ask. And, if, you know, if there's more, okay. There's never less. <laughs> and you just say come back. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, yeah, that's yeah. just the way it goes. Um, and we don't mind spending the time with you or anybody that asks us for money. So, so that's the flip side. Uh, so, I'm not sure how everyone, I mean, I understand what John's saying, and I can see what Carl's saying. Uh, what about you, Amy? I'm torn in between what both of you are saying. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to hear some other input. <laughs> Thanks, Jude. How about you? What could you think? I, I actually, um, I had a, this, a question on a description of some of the work that you're doing, um, which is coordinating with district towns committees to support existing and trail network development. Um, are there trails that go through or lead to um, the reservoir and that facility, or how is that consistent with what the function and purpose of the facility is, the Riceville? So we do have trails on site now, okay. and we're looking um, to work with, well, we, we were approached by the Middlesex Trail Commission mm -hmm. um, to work with East Montpelier Trails. Mm -hmm. I think it's the Alliance, perhaps, recently earlier, to develop a trail on the east side of the reservoir mm -hmm. that'll go from Montpelier, East Montpelier, Worcester, Callis, and then link into the um, Bay Corners and the East Montpelier Trail Network. And that's just the first step that Middlesex wants us to work going towards um, Romney. Montpelier wants to work with us going to the Stump Dump. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what that component is about. And right now, um, Governor Scott has uh, committed to $5 million annually for the foreseeable future in the VOREC, Vermont Outdoor Recreation Economic Consortium grant fund. So there's gonna be, there's already a lot of grant money going out there for trail construction. So not only are we working with developing the trails, but to maintain the trails. Because you know, it's really easy to build a trail no one gets excited about maintaining those trails. And that's the nuts and bolts that Riceville will perform. Okay. Yeah, that's the problem we have in East Montpelier too. Right. They're, 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 they burn out, it's come it's up volunteers. All, yeah, it's volunteers, mm -hmm. and it comes up all the time. Same with stay in the LVRD, you know, it's 90 miles of trails and they haven't decided who's gonna maintain them after they built them. Right, yeah, so so by it's having, and, and we work with the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission as well on, on all of our operation, but specifically on trails as well. And that's a significant component when these towns are applying for um, BOREC or RTP grants for trails to show that they have the long-term capacity to maintain those trails. So just by our existence, we will help those entities get grant funds. So, you know, if we go along with a $4 cap, everyone probably understands this is a precedent. And, but by establishing a precedent doesn't mean that other organizations we're going to allow other organizations to do the similar mm -hmm. behavior. Is mm -hmm. that correct? 
I mean, this is unusual does, for us. And that makes it, some, somebody may come in and, and ask. Exactly. That. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Because they, they could use some stability. They apply for grants. Exactly. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I agree. Well, and, and I, I mean, I just, but, I, I'm sorry, Seth, but I mean. No, don't apologize. <laughs> like I said, we, I mean, we went through this process eight years ago. Yeah. And so we set the precedence eight years ago. Yeah. That, that we we yeah. right. four towns agreed to increase the cap yeah but we did not assess yeah that cap yeah at that point at that point exactly yeah. in right. which case we signed off on it but we were young and foolish at the time <laughs> now you're older and less foolish <laughs> we didn't know what we're doing that's what he says <laughs> It was because I wasn't here at the time. What was the increment? Like what? To get up the dollar? Yeah. It went from 50 cents to $1.50. Over what period of time? Oh. Over the, the course of eight years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't I don't have that. Okay. You know, it was over a few, maybe four years mm -hmm. to get $2.50. Mm -hmm. And the primary driver for that period was the increase in the minimum wage. Okay. Which is wonderful. But... Um, you know, that on a business that relied primarily on minimum wage employees, mm -hmm. it really mm -hmm. was significant for us. I mean, we, we see the light at the, temp, at the end of the tunnel for minimum wage increases. You know, we're, we're almost a couple of years away from this real steep rise in that. So that'll help stabilize our budget as well. So, so one of the things that's driving your budget, though, is because you are going to become more or less full time. Right. But this is, I mean, the part, the part of that that comes from the towns is pretty nominal. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's revenue increase. We have a new contract with the state where we now maintain um, Shady Rail and the boat launch. Yeah. So that's the majority of what's paying for that. Yeah. For my position yeah. and the benefits. Yeah. And the hours are only incrementally going up. It's, it's the... Um, benefits part that are the more significant part of that increase but yeah I mean, most of that's coming from elsewhere yeah you know. well i'm not trying to downgrade what you're doing but all three, i mean i know you're doing a lot of work but we need all three legs oh, yeah, i get it. it happen oh yeah i know yeah i know how it works i guess i would i would support the four percent cap understanding that this is four dollars four dollar i keep saying that i that's apologize okay. four dollar cap i'm sorry <laughs> understanding that this is how um the Wrightsfield Beach um, has, this is how we funded the um, this um, organization over the, in the past, and it's consistent with that. And it, it appears that that wasn't abused and it was done reasonably and responsibly. And there's nothing suggesting that that wouldn't continue to happen in the future. And if it gives you the flexibility to get the grant funding, matching funding and things like that, um, I would, I would be in support of it. I appreciate that. But we're not to say. You know, the last time we we sought to increase it, that was just to deal with like where we're at right now. Yeah. This plan is to really have a long view. Mm -hmm. How do we get money from elsewhere? How do we develop the park? You know, it's not just how do we put the band aid on right now. Understood. But of course, as Carl made the point, every organization. Yeah, pretty much operates the same way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway. All right. Well, we're seems like we've come to some consensus on this. So are you willing to come back to us each year and give us a report? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We like to see you. Yeah. I love to see you. Care <laughs> <laughs> about the dairy industry. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So are we are we going to make a decision on this tonight? I mean. I see that we're going to discuss it, um, but you want an answer now. It would be great if I could get an answer to the request for the cap to go to four dollars because on the fourteenth I'm going to the final town, Montpelier, where we'll be seeking eight thousand okay. dollars more. Yeah, and if I can say that we have these three other towns, yeah, all lined up, it's kind of a blackmail activity. <laughs> yeah, peer pressure. I get it. <laughs> Okay, so let's do this then, because we're running late. So let's make a motion.
Don't all speak at once, please. It's a confusing <laughs> motion. Yeah, yeah. I, I think increase the cap for the Wrightsville Beach Recreation District from one dollar and fifty cents to four dollars. Excuse me, that we increase the per capita assessment cap from one dollar and fifty cents to four dollars. Can we add to that with the assumption that it's going to be two dollars and fifty cents for at least twenty twenty three? And by no more than three percent in any given year, yes. which I think it's sort of important. Yeah, that's yeah. all reasonable. That's the pretty reasonable. I would say understanding versus assumption. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we have a second. Second. John, second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Did you, did you say aye? No. No. I was, okay. I was waiting for the opposed part. Okay. So yeah. there's four ayes, and all those opposed, please say nay. 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 Okay, we have four eyes and one name. And the motion passed. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Thank I appreciate you. your input. And don't feel and I appreciate your work. And we'll see you next time. And, and, and yeah, we do appreciate your work. And we do um we like what the uh Wrightsville Beach does for people, and we how hardly approve that. And that, I mean, and we're not trying to give you a hard time. And I've enjoyed it. But we're just doing our due diligence. <laughs> and it's not easy to find someone who really cares about a project like that to, yeah. who will operate it and take care of it and cherish right. it for as long as you have. So yeah, I think this is to support what you're trying to do. And year. it's really hard to find people to do the kind of stuff that you mm -hmm. do. Right. We're, we're trying to find a replacement in Norwich, and it's, I mean, it's a better paying job. I'm choosing the worst paying job of the two. Yeah. <laughs> and we can't find a good replacement down there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, thank you all very much. Yeah. Well, thank thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, don't say it. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're running late, but that was a great discussion. Uh, presentation of funding request study committee report. Do we have someone that's going to yep. present that? I'm on. Uh, uh, oh, you oh, Lindy. Yeah. Hello, Lindy. Can you hear us? <laughs> Hi. And Hi. We can hear you. For the record, you are Lindy Johnson, the funding committee chairperson. Thank you. All right. Okay. Well, we're running a little bit late. Sorry about that. Um, <coughs> so you have a report. I see that we have the Thank report you. in front of us. Yes. And I found an error in it, which I just emailed Gina because um, I didn't change the Vermont CARES. The total is correct. But Vermont CARES should show as 300 versus 150. The spreadsheets correct everything. I just didn't get it fixed when I did the funding report. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that the, it's a new figure? It Well, it's what they requested and it's what shows on our worksheet. But when I wrote up the um, report, I didn't get it in there correctly. So Vermont Cares should be three hundred dollars in bold versus one hundred and fifty. Okay. Yep. But the total at the top, where yeah, it yeah. shows the twenty-two thousand one hundred sixty-six, that's correct. Mm -hmm. In the second paragraph. And it's down from last year. Right. Yes, right. we had that's two organizations right. not request money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that just because they just missed the deadline? No, um, Gina actually reached out to them. And oh. they still did not. Um, yep. The committee gave sense. her permission to do that. Okay. <laughs> so you didn't have to kick anybody out um, no. to come up with the amount that was under the cap? Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> Some of it wasn't that they didn't need the money as much as there was limited people and just no capacity to yeah. even request. Yeah. So okay. they opted to pass. Sounds like it might not be a good investment yeah. anyway. It was still, you know, they still opted yes to, it was a, yeah. but. Yeah, okay. And yeah, this year we had uh, many more local or level funded requests than we have in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so what it shows up as most of these organizations are level funded. But the, request, the requests were as as you approved, or did you have 
some request in here that they had mm -hmm. gone up a lot and you just approved a different amount? Um, no. The um we did offer we gave more to Winooski River than they actually asked based on their presentation and what other communities are giving and the value to our community to keep the Winooski River um, nourished with trees. And they had had some problems with some trees they did plant last year and the beavers ate. So those all have to be replaced. Yeah. Thank you for um, this color coding in the spreadsheet. That's very yes. helpful. Um, and that's where you can see Vermont Cares is in orange. It jumped out at me and I went to the report and said, oops. Yep. <laughs> um, oh, I see. You've got requests right here. I was looking at the wrong sheet. Huh. Yeah, it's pretty close to level funded, isn't it? Yeah. Huh. That's kind of unusual in these inflationary times, I would think. But I agree. But yeah. I think some of these um, organizations have also had some benefit from federal funding with yeah. the COVID relief. So they probably right. were not needing to up at this point. Yeah. So next year, eh, yeah. <laughs> the money's gone. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't have any questions. Does anybody else have any for Lindy? No. This was an enormous amount of work that you do in this each year. Thank you all for it. Oh, well, the committee does a nice job of getting together. Yeah. Well, nice. Mm -hmm. No one's got any questions? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, it's pretty straightforward. Well, thank you, Lindy. You're welcome. I think I'm sticking around for something else. <laughs> School oh, board. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Well, um, I'll mute. We can move on because we're significantly behind unless someone's got questions or comment. Nope. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is done. And the next item is discussion on 2023 town meeting. Just, consider just a question. When do we want to consider some of these additions to the agenda? Because I noticed that Maya Stone is sticking around and she's the planning commission uh, candidate. And Zach hasn't joined, so it could be that we're moving back. Future meetings, so okay. Maya is, so. okay. I see. And that is going to be part of that discussion, I assume. Um, not uh, necessarily. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, we've already started this item seven ten. We're way behind, so let's let's go. Let's plow through this one, then we can work on the next on the addition. So. Consideration approval for WC Washington County Union School District School Board <laughs> to authorize ballot mailing <laughs> to all active, not active, not challenged registered voters. Okay. So what is this about? The school district wants to, uh, they want to mail the ballot. There's a letter that Came oh. from floor that explains it. Oh, yeah. Oh, right here. Yeah. And for the record, Lindy, you're staying on as a member of the school board. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we did this last year as well. Okay, so we could we could approve this um, in advance of the December twenty first school board meeting. Did this get approved last year by all five towns? Yes. Okay. Sounds good to me. Why not? I just had a question about active registered voters. Is Rosie still on? Yep. Okay, Rosie, could you address? This um, proposal to mail the annual meeting ballots to all active registered voters, are those, is that the term for the folks that we send ballots to? It's active non-challenged voters. We have over 350 challenged voters. Most of okay. these folks are people who have moved out of town but did not give us written permission to take them off the checklist. Okay. So by asking for, this, for these ballots to go to active non-challenged folks, 
we are able to save a little money in postage and printing and also time where it comes to uh, dealing with all the return ballots. Okay. Is that a redundant term? Is active the same as non-challenged or is there a difference? Uh, challenged, okay. voters, challenged voters are still active. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, so when a not, okay, so what, so you're not going to have any ballots coming back in that are challenged. Is that? We're not having any go out. Right. They're not Auto going out, so they're not automatically. Going back in. I mean, automatically. If, if they call up and, and ask for one, yeah. then there they may be some one. new challenge votes that come in for different yes, reasons right, than right. those that yes. works with. Right, for some reason or another. Yeah. Yeah. Theoretically, they'll come in. These challenged voters who, who may still exist in the community might just show up and vote in person and say, well, I'm, I'm living here. You know. Otherwise, if they don't get back to them, then they're assuming they're gone. Or, or yeah, or they can contact Rosie and ask for a ballot. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so based on that, I've rewritten the um, the motion that Flora suggested a little bit. Uh, I think this works. I move to approve mailing WC UUSD annual meeting ballots to all active non-challenged voters on the checklist consistent with the November 16, 2022 request from the WCUS UUSD board. I think you need a registered before voters. I'm not sure if I heard registered. Uh, I think they have to be registered to be active. Nope. Yeah, active is fine. Yeah. Okay. Active is okay. It's the same registered. Yeah, if they're, if they're active, they are registered. Right. By definition. Yeah, yeah, right. Did you get that, Deidre? Uh, not all right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can see it after. Sure. Uh, well, it's I, the same sentence you just added onto it. No, I, I revised it a little bit. I, oh. I move to approve mailing WC UUSD annual meeting ballots to all active non challenged voters on the checklist, consistent with the November 16, 2022 request from the WC UUSD board. I wanted to not have it direct Rosie to do it, knowing that we can't do it unless the other towns approve it. So I just wanted to give our own approval of it so that the school board can then act on our approval and the other towns. So is it clear that it's the town of East Montpelier? Because that's not what you're saying. We are the town of East Montpelier with a select board. Yeah, yeah. but it's okay. Yeah. But yeah. you're not saying it in the motion. You no, you no. Okay. We, we know who we are. It's our, you know, it will be in our minutes. We, we never say, I, I move to approve the town of East Montpelier budget, expend so many dollars for such and such. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not sure that active and registered are synonymous. So I would just suggest having- I'm not sure why you'd want to leave the town out, but I guess they'll-, they'll... Okay, Rosie, what do you want then? <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Yeah, then- uh, we'll... I just want to address Judith's question. Yeah. Um, so all voters who register are considered active. And in our system that we use on a regular daily basis, anyone, any voter is considered active unless they are inactive, which means purged. Um, the only reason we have to purge a voter is with written permission or by death. So the act of registration is what makes you a registered, but what makes you an active voter. You're not technically a registered voter, you're an active voter. Does that help? But you need to be a registered voter to be an active voter. You need to register in order to be a voter, period, active voter. So you're saying that if you're active, they're automatically registered. When we register to vote, we are considered an active voter. We're not considered a registered voter. Right. It's just been yeah. a change in the terminology over the last several years. Oh, okay. So there's... Registered voter is not a term of art, is what you're saying. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. So, Michael? I, I just had a, thank you. I, I had a governance question. Um, since uh, after cons fourth consolidation, we no longer have an East Montpelier Town School District, mm -hmm. why is the town of East Montpelier involved in the mailing of ballots for the Washington Central Supervisory Union? Yeah, Rosie, can you answer that? Um, I can. First of all, the Washington Central Union Unified School District 
asked, uh, they sent a letter to, this, to each select board in each town requesting this action. Um, that's our only role in it. And as the school district clerk, that's when I know about it. And that letter said that they can, I believe it said that they can only do it upon approval of all four towns. That's They correct. are only authorized to send out to have us send out the ballots if all four towns and all five towns, sorry, in this district approve it. By the December 21st. That's what they're trying yeah. to get pre approval. Right. Us. Does right. that cost us extra money? No, they're going they're, to reimburse. Right. Yeah, Michael. Okay, I, so thanks. I had a financial question. Yeah. But, but uh, I, I guess, I guess again, I still have the question. And I know Rosie's the clerk of the whole unified hmm. school district. But why don't they have their own administrative process? Oh. Why are they coming back to the towns, which are no longer school districts, mm -hmm. to do this? I, it's, mm -hmm. it's not it's more than a rhetorical question. I, just, mm -hmm. I don't understand. Right. 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 Rosie? I can actually answer that one for you. Um, it's because although the school district is now its own municipality, the Agency of Education um, has not completed the legislative work they need to do in order to have school districts, in order to give school districts their own election authority. So huh. since since they didn't do that during the work of all the mergers, it's still um, up to the individual towns to semi-act as clerks for their elections. Hmm. So as the district school clerk, I oversee their election, um, but they're, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm muddying the waters here, but it's a <laughs> legislative issue and I'm told that they're working on it during this Lindy upcoming legislative up. session. Yeah. Lindy, Lindy okay. has her hand up. Was yeah. There. I just want to let Rosie finish talking. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rosie. Um, so Lindy, Lindy has, her hand up. has your hand up. Yep, just for clarity also, this way the ballots are in the same envelopes with the regular ballots versus people getting a bunch of different envelopes and confused yeah. about what they're voting on and where things go back. To. Right. So right. each town puts them with the regular right. election um, ballots. Yeah, that's correct. And the town has a checklist. They have their, they have everybody the list of voters. They have their addresses. They send them out packed bills. Just makes it a lot cleaner and easier to do for the towns. Now the only question there though is: Have we decided to mail ballots to all voters um, that we that that's normally nice. would be decided by a student ballot? We that's, have decided to do that. That's well, no, that's the next point. Of <laughs> yeah, the right. So that's my point. <laughs> No. But we, we can approve this yeah, without approving right. that yeah. and not incur any costs to the town. Right. Exactly. I, I, I'm all in favor of it. Yep. I've, I always, <laughs> I've always advocated mail-in ballots because it encourages people to vote. So in these times, it works. So any more questions on this item? No. Is Carl's motion still on the table? Yeah, could you yeah, yeah. we don't have a second for it. Yeah. It was actually a change in the proposed language for motion uh -huh. that is in this letter. Yes. So but I, I made the motion. I know you made the motion. Not been is there any more with good reason, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody really understood why you're changing it, but that's okay. <laughs> Are you upset? Yeah, could you just repeat what the motion is? Um, thank you. She, she, she's had a hard time. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make sure I understand what we're right. <laughs> uh, to approve mailing the WCUUSD annual meeting ballots to all active non-challenged voters on the checklist, consistent with the November 16th, 2022 request from the WCUUSD board made by Carl. Thank you. Very good. Awesome. Beautiful. Very nice. <laughs> Uh, does everyone like that motion? Sure. We have a second. I have a second. I, I will second that. You're going to second it. I will. Wow, you are a bold <laughs> mover. <laughs> Devil may care. <laughs> so no further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Yeah, ayes appear to have. It. They do have it. Uh, so on the next.
bullet here, it says consideration of ballot ma mailing to all active, not challenged registered voters. So that is, is that different okay. than the last? It's That's, the yeah, ballot. this is the town ballot, not the school board ballot. Oh, okay, yep. This is just regular ballots. Okay. <laughs> well, well, I'm sure they think it's, the, it's, the, it's the items that we usually vote. Yes. Australian ballot. Mm -hmm. If not the town meeting that we did in the past, we did all the items that we usually discuss at town meeting mm -hmm. on Australian ballot because we weren't going to have town meeting. That's but, a separate discussion. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, this is what we've done in the past, so mm -hmm. but not the same exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the question? Oh, what if uh, just I just want to see this where it is on the, on our. Uh... We don't really have anything other than oh. essentially the bullet. Rosie, is there any typical documentation to be provided to evaluate ballots being mailed or not? I'm sorry, I didn't hear John's question. It was really garbled. Well, uh, well, we could just say the history of it. I mean, we've we've only been doing this for two years. This is the third year, right? Is that correct, Rosie? Yes. So. yes. Yeah, I mean, what we had done in the past is people went up to school and they voted the items that we do by Australian ballot at the school. Mm -hmm. When pandemic came around, we decided to do the mail ballot, mail in ballot. And we did it for town meeting items also because we didn't have town meetings. Right. So all we're trying to do now is to follow that same pattern, disregarding the town meeting aspect of it, of mailing ballots to people on that that would decide the items that are Australian ballot. And when we did it two years ago, if I remember correctly, the state funded the yeah. mailing, and uh, and now I think there's no more state funding for it, so we would fund it with yeah. our tax dollars. Yeah. Yeah. But as we discovered, it encouraged people to vote. It did. So it's a good thing. Yeah. Rosie has something. Yep, Rosie. On this, if I can speak to the financial aspect of it, since you've already um, approved the Washington Central ballots, should all the other four towns, both of those ballots will go out at the same time in the same envelope, and therefore your cost will be split in half with the school. Right. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so the other thing that I wanted to mention and make sure people understand is that, well, um, over the last two years, we have mailed these ballots out en masse. Ballots are always available if you contact the, contact the town clerk's office. We refer to them as absentee ballots. And in the past, we've had a number of people who have you know, taken advantage of the fact that we have absentee ballots available to be mailed out. As a word of caution, we may have to do the, well, okay, back up. There is also a third ballot that goes out this year as well, as it did last year. The Central Vermont Career Center will have a ballot. Yeah. And theirs will be entirely separate because there are 18 towns involved with that. And no, there's not a way that we can think of to get 18 towns to all agree to mail ballots. So, so those ballots will only be available to people who ask for them or correct. who come in to vote on town meeting day. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah. But the people that ask for them are going to get in the same envelope. If they ask for them ahead of time. I guess so, yeah. Yeah. Can I have one? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> ask me after January 2nd. Okay. Okay. So what's a what's a so what would the motion look like? The motion would be to mail out to ballots. Uh, I move to mail all town meeting ballots. Uh, I move no. to mail town meeting ballots for 2023 to all active non-challenged voters on the checklist. But wouldn't you say you differentiate? You have to say the East Montpelier ballot. You have to say by an Australian ballot, the ones you usually decide by the Australian ballot. Well, the ballot is... The ballot is... The ballot is Australian ballot. Okay, but you're not discussing town meeting... We aren't making that decision in this motion. Right. Yeah. Well, I just want to make sure we're not. Right. Seth, there are two separate ballots last year depending upon whether 
town meetings in person or not. Right. Last mm -hmm. year and the year before, we had ballots that included all of, for example, the funding committee requests. Those are usually voted on the floor. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they probably those will be are the, Those are the kinds of things that we will not have on a ballot for an in-person town meeting. We just revert back to what 2020 was. Yeah. And um, Gina has, Gina and I have come up with that warning and that's the one that you have seen in the past, uh, the last meeting last week. Okay. So in the motion, it's, it's clear that it's just gonna be the items that we generally decide by Australian ballot. So it would be town meeting Australian ballot items. Yes, right. Yeah. Town meeting ballots, I mean, period. Yeah. And that way, if the legislature um, last year, the legislature, yeah. or this year actually, uh, the legislature moved very quickly at the beginning of the session to change the law again to what it had been for 2020 to allow us to have everything by Australian ballot. And so this motion would allow us to do whatever we decide to do later on. Okay. If the legislature yeah, tells, tells us that that's we could do that right. and we decide to do that, yeah. then we don't have to revisit the yeah. way. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Yeah. We have a second. Could you repeat the motion? Do you want to read what you have, Peter? Yeah, uh, to mail town meeting ballots for 2023 to all active non challenged voters on the check. Yeah. Good. We have a second. Second. We have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Um, then the next bullet is discussion on 2023 town meeting warnings. And the warning we have. The only change from what you saw last week yeah. in the meeting was just to move the town forum. I had it on a Saturday yeah. um, and moved it to Monday. Yeah. Monday to fourth town meeting. Otherwise, I'm not exactly sure how these discuss discussions go. Mm -hmm. In the past, this kind of lives on your agenda from meeting after meeting. After right. Meeting. Yeah. Right. So I'm assuming that if there's something to be discussed, it either comes to me in some format. Yep. Or you all have something that you want to address on this. So, so what usually happens is that the number of things highlighted with uncertain terms in them gets reduced at each meeting. Over okay. Time. So I got one question on the town forum. Last year, it seems like we did more than one. One forum? Correct? Yeah. No, did we? Oh. Seems like we did. What were we discussing on sequential Mondays for a town meeting or some subject? Seems like there was more than don't, one. Don't, I'm pretty sure there was. I think we're required to do two, and one must be within like 10 days before the actual town meeting. But I think that one of our select board meetings in general in January is oh, it's a pre town meeting, town meeting. Is a yes. forum as well yeah. or a hearing. We, maybe it was a hearing we were having, but right? mm -hmm. I know, yeah, Rosie. Carl, we're not. We're only required to have one town. Okay. Board. Okay. Town so, board within so, so maybe, maybe what we've done in the past is just had a general forum for people like forty days before. No, uh, I think it must have been a hearing. Yeah, Rosie. The town forum has traditionally been that Saturday morning, where right. we all go up to the school and twelve people show up and we go through the agenda. No, no, but we we moved it to Monday yeah. evenings because it was so poorly attended on Saturday, and we did that last year and maybe even the year before. Not the year before, but we did it last just, year. Didn't we? Just last year. But I'm wondering if we. I I seem to remember there was some Monday evenings more than just the form, but it may have been we had some hearings because I remember nobody attended. I think um, that it was probably because it rang a bell when you said that, yeah. but I think it probably was hearings. Maybe it was a hearing yeah. and no one came to it. Because I remember I said yeah. that. It might have been about um, something to do with the planning town plan or something. Yeah, like it might have been. Maybe yeah. I think you're right. Mm. Uh, but I'm okay with just having one forum. I just want to make sure that we have um, enough it. for people to talk, enough time allocated. Mm -hmm. I mean, they haven't been well attended in the past, but 
You mean doesn't mean that it won't be this year. So we'll just yeah, Rosie. Um, I wanted to bring it to your attention that at this point in time, your pre-town meeting, your forum the night before town meeting is also being held at the same time as the Washington Central Forum for their town for, for their annual meeting. But I believe that Floor is working to change that um, with them. So um, stay we'll tuned. You, you get yours first. So okay. that's that's been a recurring issue. Uh, and this is not the first time that's happened. And that would be good if one or the other of us could change it. So well, we can change the time or something. Yeah. 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 Okay. What time is theirs, Rosie? Do you... um, theirs starts at seven and yours starts at 6 30. Or traditionally. So maybe we could make the spread bigger. Floor is actually talking about doing it on the Wednesday before, which may mean that they call a special meeting, but usually their first uh, Wednesday meeting of the month is a community forum anyway. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. That's a little ways away. I just want to call your attention to the fact that the draft we have in front of us says 7 30 p.m. Yeah. at the top and then 10 a.m. After A and 10, 10 at B and so on. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have anything else? I'll change that to 6 30 if you all would like. Um, one in the past started at 7 30, which is where I pulled it up from, but maybe. Right. Well, do we need some time before the, the hearing, the forum, to conduct other select board business? We've done it afterwards in the past. Uh -huh. So then 7.30 may be the right time to allow you an hour for a well, well, or, or the thing is we can't start the the forum before the warrant time. Right. And Why I would we start it before the meeting starts? We could, we could start our meeting at 6.30 and recess until the end of the forum mm -hmm. and then have the forum start at 6.31 and do that as, if nobody shows up or a few people show up and it goes very quickly, then we could start up the flex board meeting again. That way we can warn them both for 6 30. I think and we won't have to yeah. sit around. Yeah, and sit. yeah we, we need a, a mechanism to um, start our meeting when we when the forum's done. Right. Not a set time. Right. Because forums sometimes are, nobody comes. Yeah. And we're sitting around for now. Yeah. We can't do that. Yeah. Right. So, whatever way we do it, yeah. if we start the forum right off we can just say we're going to start the select board meeting when the forum's done right we don't have to set it we do not set a time right 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 so okay Any, anybody have anything else no that's unusual okay uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay sounds good um so we want to do the additions i guess we can um where is that multi-page document with it I'm going to start with uh, Maya. So. Sure, let's start with Maya. Uh, I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Maya. Hi. The very last document yeah, there. Here, is uh, Maya's information. Mm -hmm. Letter of interest and resume. Edition. And has the Planning Commission forwarded us a recommendation? I did not receive anything other than letting them letting me know, yes, that they have they are submitting Maya for your consideration. They have submitted. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. they reviewed. Yeah. Okay. Um okay. So I guess we uh have Maya here and we have question for her. Uh, so you want to be on the planning commission? That's, that's yeah. Right. <laughs> open the conversation. <laughs> yeah, I I would like to uh, fill the vacancy and then uh, eventually run in for the spot in the town meeting, twenty twenty three. Right, because this is only going to be the March. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> uh, so she would be filling somebody's seat that moved away. Right, mm -hmm. they moved to Plainfield. Right, just to be clear. Mm -hmm. Um. So it's only for a few months, and then she would run to the scene. Right, is what she's saying. And Just out of curiosity, who moved to Plainfield? Spencer Hardy. Oh, okay. Yeah. He filled in for Sue Tip Lamb, who also moved to Plainfield. 
I think she moved a little further south, didn't she? What? what? She went to Brookfield. Washington or Brookfield or something? something. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, out of town. Yeah. And and just to be clear, Maya, um, you have recently moved to East Montpelier, but uh, you grew up here, right? Yes. Yeah, I grew up here. Yeah. And okay. I'm currently, yeah, living neighbors with my sister and my parents, not planning on moving to Plainfield. <laughs> yeah, I mean, are we allowed to ask that question? I don't think oh, right. Well, you didn't ask, right? <laughs> I'll offer it. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, even if you did have a move to Plainfield in the future, we could you know, put you on for now, as long as you don't say you're planning to move to Callis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be disqualifying. <laughs> you do know that Carl's joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm familiar with Carl, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so I think that you'd probably be a good fit. Cool. I agree. Yeah. I have no objection. <laughs> Thanks for coming to this meeting, Maya. Yeah. yeah. yeah thanks for sticking yeah. around so long. <laughs> sure. It's it's really interesting. I'm I'm really excited to be moving back and engaging at a different level of the community. This is fun to be a part of. Yeah. I think it's great that you're wanting to get involved. I think that's wonderful. Well, thanks. <laughs> um, so of course you'll be able to zoom into meetings or in person. So that works out well for you. So, oh yeah. yeah yeah i mean we have that option now uh i don't have really any questions does anybody else have any questions for mine no 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 okay i move to appoint maya stone to the planning commission for what is it until town meeting yeah. day yeah. for the remainder of the term is it the remainder of the term yeah because the term ends in march the term automatically ends in March. Yeah. Spencer's term ends in March. Yeah, okay. In okay. Yeah. So for the remaining uh, remainder of the term of the planning commission position that is open, how does that sound? It sounds kind of convoluted, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you have, do you have a more concise way to phrase it? I probably do, but I want her to feel. I'll second that. <laughs> we have a second. Get it over with. Oh, perfect. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> Well, hey. board. Well, yeah. board. Congratulations. Great. Thank you. Yeah, thank, Thanks. And thank you for doing this. Yes, thank you. We, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I do have to hop off, but Maya? thank you so much for your time. Yep. Maya, before you hop off, please come and see me so you can fill in your oath before your meeting next week. Absolutely. We'll do. <laughs> All right. I'll see you later and have a productive evening. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. We haven't had much production so far we're trying so all these other items on this one page are additions so yeah but i mean you're forbidden by law <laughs> this is forbidden by law well zach's not here so you can eliminate that one's the drawing page so so all of that the fire department stuff is rather quick so one there's a meeting thursday night with the fire department i don't know if any of the select board members can attend Thank I'm not going to be here. I'll be here. I know You're Seth is traveling. John? I don't know. I think that's I'm meeting every single night this week. I'm not oh. be able to. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's really a pain. And I'm planning no. to attend. Okay. So um, I may be able to attend. Okay, okay great. And you can attend, probably. It's the outlook is not good. Okay. <laughs> I might surprise you. Well, I'm See, traveling that day. So I'm going to be Zoom on the or They yeah, did not I mean, do the Zoom option okay. last time. So it's good I mean, it's, it's seven. I, I it's also, yeah. Central, Central Los Angeles. Uh, they, they don't do Zoom at the fire station. They didn't so. last meeting. Okay. Yeah. I've only been here for one of these. Right. All right. Yeah. That's true. Was Orca going to be there? If yeah, or, Orca. Orca has been there. It's a meeting of the select board. So, right. so they're, they're we should probably tell. We should probably tell about this. Yeah, I yeah, but it's know. not a meeting. It'll make it is there yeah, one meeting for us? Yeah. It's, one meeting. it's a noticed meeting. We've had Orca there in the past. Think we won't have a forum if not. If we don't get yeah, it's meeting. not. It's not a one meeting by the uh, Callus does it as a warm meeting. We've done it as an unnoticed meeting, which means we're not empowered to make any decisions. Just let people know where you are. Callus might have Orca there since it's a warm meeting for them. Okay. Well, 
Do you, do you want to be in touch with Orca and just? I mean, I can email them and yeah. ask. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably run it through the fire department first just to, if right. it's their meeting. So, have they been there? Oh, I guess they've been there. Orca's been there. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It wasn't easy. Yeah, yeah. 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 we have we have had non fire department meetings at the fire department. Yeah, there, so no work has been there. Treat, 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 treat. I know, right? Yes. Remember, it didn't work out very well. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. I mean, without maybe we just let Cal do it if they want to. It would have been nice to have a little more notice on this meeting, just to say. But isn't it always it? Yeah. Thursday in December. Is it? It has been. Okay. It sounds like in the past. I'm just not sure how this communication yeah. normally flows. Right. Well, it's usually about this crappy. I mean, this way. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the documents never get out. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So that's the way it goes. But you say the documents for the meeting are posted yes, to the website? Wow. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's unusual. Yeah. 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 And you have them as well. For Carl, they're on the website. Those of yeah. you with the paper, they're in the packets. Okay. Um, and the only other fire department, Toby reached out to me last week. Um, it was in May, I believe it was, that the select board authorized the fire department to use yeah. the remaining fund balance that they had for yeah. some LED light replacement mm -hmm. and the paving yeah. projects. Mm -hmm. So he had called me and said, what? Yeah. Were you guys going to cut us a check? And he was trying to figure out what's happened. I, we we paid an electrical bill, so the balance I think then was around thirteen thousand. It's just under sixty eight hundred right now. Yeah. Um. He asked if the board would have, would authorize just releasing the remaining funds to them so that they can kind of do what they need to do and eliminate the confusion of where the bills need to go when when a bill comes in and they can just pay for it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm asking you all tonight. If that is something you would be willing to do yeah. or do you want them to continue submitting i'm trying to remember what was it was it all of the remaining funds yeah it was the, the the motion was to re release all of the remaining funds for their yeah. projects let's, let's give them the money yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 that's what it's just there's been some and it's funny larry the chief brought over a bill today so i think they're they're trying to figure out when they get a bill and they're doing something what to do with it so i can send that bill Either pay it and give them the net amount right. or send that yeah. go back to them and yeah. go ahead. We can cut them a check and yeah. I'm assuming that the um improvements or whatever they're doing over there's probably gonna be more than the current balance. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If it's more than or less than it doesn't really matter. Yeah. I and mean, if they pocket change. Yeah, more. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I move to approve transferring the remainder of the balance in the emergency services facility fund to the East Montpelier Fire Department, a sum of $6,754. That's 5,800 and something. Right. Is, is 6,754 is what, That's what it says here, what but Gina said gave 5,000 something. No. He said just so under $6,800. Oh. Now it's just under 6800 Oh, okay. All right. And namely, yeah. 6,754. Yeah, yeah, got it. Okay. Yeah. okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The eyes appear to have it. They do have it. So ignore the rest of your long page. <laughs> really? Yeah. Ah, that's a lot of writing. It may come back course. again, but. Energy commitment. Yep. Committee. Yep. Town plan amendment. Energy plan. Ignore. That will bite the flavor. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to the meeting. Uh, the next item is discussion on FY 2024 budget development. You just yeah. saw one last week. This is an update with some changes from Guthrie. I mean, it's still a work in process. I'm not sure how much detail you want to get into now or peruse and we'll. So the changes from last week's would be on what? In the high rate department. Okay. That's good to go back. And really, Guthrie didn't on page change five. much. Um, is it the highlighted ones? Yes. Okay. So really, it's just based on he and I sat together and went through this, just what he knows is costing more now, <laughs> essentially. Um, and it's not as bad as you would think, to be honest with you. And a lot of these budgets have been held flat for years. So, you know, like with salt, 
you know, we agreed around a 10 percent or so increase um, was fair based on the latest pricing that he is seeing. And then just minor increases, again, just all due to just costs today. Um, uniforms, a little bit of an increase there. Um, garage electricity, electricity and heating fuel. I mean, we all know those. Uh, trash, he has seen tick up just a tiny bit as well. Um, so he wanted to be a little conservative and put just an extra 500 in there. Yeah. Same with vehicle equipment and repairs. That number is kind of all over the place. It seems like when I look at history, but um, you never know. Yeah, yeah. He, he felt it's comfortable. Such a, yeah, it, it is. It's I mean, it's dark, you know, it's wild when you look at this budget. Mm -hmm. I've looked at it over I forget how many years I pulled um, the actuals, and it's just depends on what happens in a year. Mm -hmm. But totally unbelievable. Anything else? No, everything else is status quo. I mean, I'm still going through this line by line. Well, we can but spend more. We can spend more time tonight on it if you want us to. Well, if not, we can move on. If we're already running zero. We can move on. I'd like to have a little more time with it. I honestly got distracted partly with County Road, which is the next item, okay. um, getting the financial update. And honestly, I've been looking a lot into the grants because I want to start working on the reimbursements to get the money back. Right. as quickly as possible. So that's kind of distressed yeah. me a little in the last week. So. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, I just uh, checked online and uh, the documents, uh, I didn't realize they were up online. I was just looking at the warning for town meeting by Mike. Didn't there used to be a line in there that said, shall voters hear the report of the select board? Wasn't, wasn't that an article? I said, I noticed it wasn't listed as an article. But I always thought it, it, the, it's not the select board report. We always did that. It was to hear the reports from the various town offices. Yeah. Office. And, is that, and, is that, and that's not on the warning, is what you're saying? I don't think it's so. Not it could be a mistake. Well, there's article, <clears throat> excuse me, article one is to elect all necessary officers for the ensuing year. Yeah. I guess that's. That's different than hearing a report, isn't it? Yeah. I think last year the item you're talking about was not actually on. Well, that's just because. That's why I didn't do it. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember my view that that was always kind of a, that was either an article or an. Yeah, article. that's a, that's a good catch. So yeah. maybe Gina, you could go back to the 2019 warning. Okay. And see if there are other things that we might have omitted last year just because we weren't meeting in person. Okay. I know it did say to hear the report from the various yeah. officers, yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. 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 Because that's what I usually talk against my will about what we have not done or done. <laughs> you, you do a good job. <laughs> yeah. You just, yeah. Whatever. Okay. So, um, so we're going to end the discussion on the FY 2024 budget development. We're going to move on to the county road project update financial. This I did not give you a big spreadsheet. I just put a little chart in the annotated agenda. Thank you. But this is the summary. I have a lot of detail if you would like to see it. Um, but uh, this is the summary of where we have ended. Uh, and all the bills should be in. This should be reflective. I mean, unless there's any kind of surprise that I have the numbers from Pike. Um, and we've been done with the culverts. So um, essentially the total town cost is just over 900,000, 913, mm. almost 914,000. Um, there's 384,000 in grant funding that will offset the nearly $1.3 million of costs. Yeah. The good news is, I mean, the paving in the the between the executed contract and the change order, so the last known total um, was anticipated to be about nine hundred forty-two thousand, and it did come in under that at nine hundred three. Um, road crew saved us a little bit on shoulder gravel because they uh, had to gravel because they kept pushing us on their schedule, so they had to do a little bit of cleanup um, to help Mary people's driveways to um, yeah. to the road. So they have a little bit of savings, but that wasn't a lot. Um, a lot of it is because really the fuel overages that we expected did come back down some before we 
finally yeah. paved the road. So um, the delay worked in our favor a bit mm. as it yeah. relates to cost. Mm. <laughs> so right, because well, fuel has been going up and down. Yeah, and it, it, had, it had gone up, and then yeah, by the time we actually executed the change order, it actually come down a little bit. Yeah, um, from where we thought it was going to be, but then by the time it was actually paved, mm. the cost came down again a little bit more. Mm. So all in all, fairly somewhat in line with what we expected, which I don't think any of us really expected. expected. <laughs> but it was but still so, significantly more than the estimate we had last year. A lot. The culverts in particular, yes. Yeah. The paving. And the only reason it didn't happen last year is the culverts never came. Yeah. And that cost us like $300,000 more. Yeah, the culverts. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a lot of money. Yeah. Really, the paving kind of came in about in line. It really the overage is, is the culverts yeah. from the original. Oh, well. Yeah, I didn't put this estimated cost was the latest, like board approved, which I think was in April. Okay. When you all approved, that's when you got the increase in the culverts. I know. Cost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's when I was like, oh, no. <laughs> like from this year to last year, it's such a big job. I do have a spreadsheet that shows all of that, yeah. but I yeah. see. That's okay. So, so our total, our total cost, um, regardless of the grant funding, uh, or without regard to the grant funding, is eleven thousand four hundred and seventy over what we approved in April with the change orders. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. And the town costs nine hundred thirteen thousand bucks. Wow. But we have the money, which is good because we've been putting it aside. So, and we got to move the rolling on County Road. Yeah, huge project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we got a celebration on it. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, just to let everyone know, that's an expensive project that we don't usually have on our paving. Yeah. The paving, most of the paving that we budgeted for is shim and overlay, which is where you just put a layer on top of what's already there. Right. But this got bull mag ground up, and then we had the culverts in there. To make this three culverts, off. one of which we did ourselves, two of which were done by the uh, guys who did it, mm -hmm. and they were really expensive. So yeah. ordinarily in the paving line, we do have money, but it's mostly for shim and overlay, which is just a layer on top, which is what we did about you know eight, nine, ten years ago. Yeah. We did shim and overlay on every road in town. Because when I got on the select board, there was like they had money in the um in the budget to do it, but the roads were awful shape. So we pushed that up forward. And just got, hey, we'll do every road, do every road, pay for it as we went. And it worked out really well. And then we started to put money aside, which is how we got the money in there for this project. Right. But going forward, we're not going to have to spend that money per mile because it's going to be a different type of project. And uh, according to information that Guthrie gave me, I don't remember the exact date, but the last time that the Stretches County Road was addressed in this way with the bow magging was back in the late 90s. Yeah. Yeah, but we're not going to have to bull mag every road in town. Right. No. So anyway, there you go. <clears throat> so anyway, good work. Done. <laughs> and it's paid for, so that's even better. Mm -hmm. You don't have to borrow money. Because in the in the past, before all these roads got redone in the last 10 years, they had a bond for it. They bonded. They didn't have the money. So they put a bond out and did every road in town. And that's what we're working on. Mm -hmm. So we've done really well budget-wise to be able to pay for this as we go. Mm -hmm. That's a really good plan. Good explanation. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else on the update? Good work. Uh, I don't see that we need any approvals. Yeah. We already did. Um, so can we move on? Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Thanks Bye -bye. for coming in. Yeah. You know anything else on that? Yeah. You good? Okay. Uh, so the next item, um, some of you are familiar with it that have attended meetings in the past. <laughs> uh, it's discussion on town management in light of COVID 19. Oh. And uh, we went through this fairly quickly last time, but now we have Carl here tonight, so maybe it won't be so quick. <laughs> okay. You have the floor cup. <laughs> Gina has put in to the, I'll just say what I usually say, Gina has put into 
the annotated uh, select board report that uh, the Washington County is at low using the community level tool from the Centers for Disease Control. And uh, we don't know what's going on with case rates anymore. We've got some numbers that the CD gives, CDC gives us, but because people are taking so many uh, tests at home and not reporting them, then we don't know what's going on. And I've seen estimates that actual case rates are you know, five to 10 times more than this. And we're just going with what we have and what um, any change in what people are saying in terms of their comfort level with masks when they come in here? No. Okay. No. no. Okay. I mean, I don't really know. I mean, I do hear about some cases anecdotally, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, here and there. That's about all I really know. I mean, people are concerned. It's out there. Right, yeah. it's out yeah. there for sure. You regularly, here are someone that has it. So mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. anybody's sick right now. No, you don't. No, and I, I also think we we don't have a lot, a lot of kids in our family at this point, and so you know a lot of children are getting sick. Yeah, yeah. I don't know anybody. There's some teachers right. out right now. What that? There's some teachers out right now. Yeah, with with COVID. With COVID. yeah, yeah. Scott and I have been substituting. Oh really? Yeah, we have. Good for you, locally. Yeah, we were at Romney on Friday. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, and there was a teacher out from COVID there. Oh, really? Oh. And somebody else was something else. Yeah, what did you yeah. teach? Oh, really? Uh, third and fourth grade. Cool. Fine. Scott had the sixth graders. Uh -huh. oh, <laughs> okay. Um, so, do you have anything else to say about COVID? No? no. No. Okay, we're good. So, we can move on. Um, Warrants. We have one right going here. around. We should, uh, hmm. get some more. Yeah, that's, that's, oh, that's not payroll. Yeah, that's payroll. The warrant is the AP. You want for it? No, go ahead. You did, you signed the other one, so we just, I just sent it around. Yeah, that's the payroll one. Oh, that one that you sent around. Oh. I noticed that there's people. The select board doesn't usually review that one, but they can. It went pretty good. It's public information. <laughs> 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 I just hey, the word there, I'm going to sign again ahead of it. Yeah, you did. Okay. Which is the wrong one, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. That's not that's not too big. It's, not, it's two pages. This is three. Well, so three that warrant is longer partly because that is the funding. So yeah. The funding I see yeah. all these are right. funding. So you'll see. Okay. Our, I don't think I need to sign this. You don't have to. No, you don't. We've but, already. But, John and in Infinite well, Wisdom decided that we did. So I okay. thought I'd get ahead. You know, what happens when you try to do that? Oh, the Kellogg Hundred yeah. Library. So these are the appropriations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Pike Industries. Oh, that was yeah. a big check. And there's a big check in. <gasps> wow. That's everything except the uh, shoulders. Hmm. 23000 I'm still waiting that bill for Wind Valley, that was, yeah, that's appropriation right there. VLCP insurance. And yeah. Okay, did you want this, John? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Clockwise. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Not much on your town administrative report. No, we did receive the audit report late Friday, but yeah, I have not yet gone through it. Yeah. The biggest thing on the town administrator report is to discuss that January 2nd, the size of the board. Mm -hmm. Side. Mm -hmm. whether they would like to meet that Monday night. So. It's fine with you? It's fine with me. But it's your vacation, vacation day? It's my yeah. holiday. But yeah. I don't know. I mean, would you be okay taking the holiday the next day? Oh, I have, I, I'm fine doing it. It doesn't, that doesn't bother me. Uh -huh. I, I'm fine. And we'll all be recovered from our parties? Anymore. Like you were planning on coming in. 
And working on the second anyway? No, but if we're having the meeting, I'm coming and work on this. I, I just don't think it's a good precedent. Yeah, I just said a meeting on a holiday. I don't like that. No. Yeah. Either. Why is it a holiday? I mean, the first it's, the years. it's the recognize the Monday because the first thing on Sunday, the Monday is so the all will be closed Monday. Oh, yeah, just like exactly. Christmas is Sunday, but yeah. the recognize holiday yeah. is Monday. Oh, it's going to be closed, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's true. We do have a practice in the past of rescheduling our meetings when they would fall on a holiday. Yeah, and this is not just a town holiday, it's a federal holiday, yeah. state holiday. Oh, one. yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so maybe the 9th and the 23rd? Or 9th, 16th, and 23rd, since January is busy for us as we approve the budget. No, I'm here on the 16th. When is the. I'm not here on the 9th. Okay. What's that? When is Oh, to what? that's a good question. That's probably the 16th, isn't it? Yeah, Martin Luther King. That's the holiday. Probably the 16th. Yeah. Yeah. January is Chuck. Right. Cole. Yeah. But, right. But in all fairness, yes. there's a lot to do with budget. There is. We can just do one. What, what about the so, other weekend? Yeah. The other week. Does that fall? Is it DRB, though, on Tuesday? If we move our meeting to the third? DRB is the first Tuesday. Right. So that's the third. Hmm. Yeah. So we're are, are we looking at moving off of Martin Luther King Day on the sixteenth? Yeah, we can't do it that. Day. Yeah, yeah. Right. I would say. How about like moving both up a week? Does that make sense? Up a week. What does that mean? I don't know what I mean, that means. Forward and backwards. Go the ninth and the twenty third. Uh -huh. Whatever. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Will that be sufficient? I won't be here the 23rd we, if I can do it. We're usually, I think we usually have a bunch of meetings in January, don't we? Well, there are only two scheduled right now. Well, those, those are just our regular yeah, meetings. Yeah, probably think, okay, we have to have sorry. more meetings. In, we, can, we can jam more We, we haven't always. Yeah. I mean, there's been times we have, yeah. but not always. Usually December is when we have the chock full of meetings. Mm -hmm. isn't well, actually, the, there's a deadline in January for the report. Right. The mm -hmm. slide board report and any other reports. It's right around January. The town meeting warning. The, the warning. Mm -hmm. there's, a, the, there's that deadline. Right. Is that the 20th? I haven't gotten it's the clear answer on the deadline. It's right around that day. It's right around that. Day. Yeah. 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 Before town meeting. I mean, what's important for our calculations is our deadline, our state statutory deadline for finalizing the town meeting warning, which is X many days before town meeting since town meeting is so late this year then it might is it that late no it's not it's, it's six, six is the seventh or seventh or is, is the latest that it can possibly be it's the first tuesday in march i have right now tentatively that that would be finalized by a january 16th meeting. right um yeah and really that was a request okay. from rosie to uh -huh. i guess she said in the past it kind of sometimes goes to the nth hour and that makes her life a little bit more mm. difficult. So well, that's Debbie's always on. She worked on because she's got to get the pages planned. In the oh, that's a good point too. Yeah, yeah. Deb would need it by then as well. I would have. Yeah. Yeah. Deb has told me she needs things by. All I've gotten is mid January. I'm not sure okay. what what's, that date is. What's exactly, What's wrong with the night? Yeah, we're following. Nothing wrong with the night. Okay. Yeah, we're following the night. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're just jumping around. It could be somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> but you, you said you're on the night, not on the 23rd. Is that correct? I'm not here on the 23rd. Yeah. So the issue is, uh, do you want? Might we may have to have that. I can zoom in. We may have to have a meeting before the 20th. I may have to have a subsequent meeting after the 9th. Is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Right. But you can't go on the 23rd if, if you have a death minutes on the 20th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know when that deadline is, but I know it's right around that. I'm pretty sure the statutory deadline would be late, quite late in the month. Because but, because but if Rosie wants us to do something earlier for her convenience, well, and that it's, it's also, all I've gotten is mid January, so uh, that would so we'd have to plan our stuff by the night. What's the thing? I mean, right, twenty third. Yeah. Can we do something later in the week of January second, like the Wednesday or Thursday? Just throwing that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm leaving. On the fourth. That's the Wednesday. That's and Tuesday is out because of DRB, apparently. 
yeah, if they have a meeting. But they I mean, don't always have a yeah, meeting. Yeah, it remains to be seen. Because they don't have a lot going on. Event or not, it's a quiet time, but yeah. good point. I don't know whether we count you know, that or not. Let's schedule our meeting for the Tuesday. And they can schedule a different time because they don't have any pressing business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they right haven't. now, I know there's no. Right. Not that I'm okay. aware so of. So they can schedule that on us. That works for me. That works for me, too. So, wait, what, what is the date now? The, the third. Third. The third. Okay, so we're going to do it on the third and then we're going to do it. Uh, the 17th. Week. Well, no, we can't do this. Oh, the 17th is a Tuesday. Yeah. Because we can't do it on Monday. Right. Because it's a holiday. Right. right. So, we're going to do a meeting on the. <laughs> Third and the meeting on the ninth. No, on the seventeenth. Seventeenth, which we probably should because of the deadline. Yeah, we're looking so at. the third and the seventeenth. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that gives them the Tuesday in between to have a meeting if they need to have it on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Correct. Now I'll communicate with the PRB. Yeah. Thank you. And Tyson tomorrow. I think that'll work out better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm for that. Right. And I won't have to okay. zoom in, which is better in some ways, but well, it's fun to zoom. <laughs> okay. I will email work as well. It so. is? Oh. <laughs> no, it's not really. No, it was like yeah, right yeah. with that. <laughs> Sometimes you got those zoom meetings. I'm not one of the emails and <laughs> it's hard to meet the zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we can do it, but kind of thought. Forward. But we, oh, we can do it. Sorry. Sometimes the internet's not that good, and you know, oh, that yeah. computer doesn't work. And I could have done a Zoom meeting, meeting last time, but I was with my family. Yeah. I, I wanted to be with them. Yeah. yeah. Much yeah. as I love you all. Oh, thank uh, you. <laughs> we can understand that. Okay. I think that I think that'll work. Um. What's next on the agenda? Last <laughs> time there, you were fairly. What's that? Okay. All oh, right. Do you have anything else, Dan? No. I wanted to just maybe raise something. Perhaps next time we can discuss um, is ALRA funding and whether or how. I mean, I I don't know that Which we funding? ALRA um, the ARPA ARPA. Wow. Okay. okay. Please, Louise. Okay. okay. ARPA. I thought it was <laughs> <laughs> Nope, not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you said it, right? ARPA. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a, um, oh, my but, gosh. So I was... You want to talk about um, the options? Yeah, and I'm sorry. I was in a meeting the other day, and I think I said ALBRA instead of ARPA. That's why they were looking at me. Funny. Can you call them? <laughs> Can you call them? I will. I'll we'll, we'll make sure to do that. Yeah. Oh, that's embarrassing. Yeah, okay. so we, we do have some expenses that um, Gina has brought up that um, may qualify for our funding also, mm -hmm. uh, that we may need to use a little bit of that money. Could we maybe have it as an agenda item yeah. next time yeah. to talk yeah. about you yeah. know, no, good. how we're going to go about deciding what to yep. use the money for and also whether or how we want to go out to yeah. the public. Yep. So, sure. okay, great. That's Thank you. Idea. Yep. Well, I had one other thing. Um, Gina, thank you for setting up the select board email addresses for us. And yeah. I know that there was a, a one week deadline to use those that. links. Uh, oh. has, has anyone set up oh, their address I yet? I need to get on it. It wouldn't let me. So. Okay. I just I just pasted it into my calendar for tomorrow to try it. I was just wondering if thank anybody else had done it. it. Like, I go, well, I got I, it. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you the award she did on it. You did it and it worked for you. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Good. I checked it again after I set it up. Yeah. Okay. Well, good job. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to do that. <clears throat> I tried to do it off my iPad and it didn't work. So I'll just use my computer. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes it's glitchy. Right. Okay. Uh, We're all waiting. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion that we adhere in tonight. Second. <laughs> all the favor, please say aye. 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 The eyes appear to have it. They do have it. <laughs> All right. Did you vote? I voted. Okay. Yes. Here I didn't go with the math. <laughs>